Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make something that is not only a great tasting keto-friendly snack, but it's also gonna give a total gourmet upgrade to your charcuterie tray. Balsamic marinated Kalamata olives. A couple of weeks ago, my wife Terry and I were walking through downtown and we got a little bit hungry and decided we would stop in at the Spring City Wine House and have a charcuterie tray. On this tray were some Kalamata olives that were marinated in something. I tasted them and loved them. Well, Terry did as well. They were tangy and a little bit sweet and they just paired so wonderfully with everything else in the charcuterie tray, the cheeses and meats and nuts. They were just wonderful. So I told our waitress that I loved them, but I could tell that there was something maple or brown sugar or something in it that was making it not keto. And I wanted to reverse engineer this and ketofy it. She gave me the recipe. So thank you, Eliana. I really do appreciate it. I hope my, my viewers do as well. And now I'm gonna show you how to make it too. Into a blender jar, we will add one half cup of extra virgin olive oil. That is 120 mil if you're doing the metric thing. Then one quarter cup of balsamic vinegar, or 60 ml. One half tablespoon of minced garlic, about seven grams. One half teaspoon of sea salt. One half teaspoon of ground black pepper. One half tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, that's about seven ml. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, that's about 30 grams, or 30 ml. I don't know how you measure mustard in metric. And then the brown sugar or brown sugar substitute of your choice, I'm using Truvia Sweet, 100 grams or one half cup. Pop the lid on our blender, and then I'm gonna blend this for two minutes on low to medium low until it's thoroughly emulsified. In fact, this is not gonna separate at all. If you like the taste, you could probably even use it as a salad dressing. I then have 11 ounces or 310 grams of Kalamata olives that I have drained from their brine and I'm gonna put those back into the jar here. Then I'm gonna add my marinade. And if you made this according to the recipe, you should have just enough marinade to cover all of your olives. Though you may need to poke at them a little bit with a spatula just to make sure they're all submerged. Then I'm gonna pop the cap back on this and put them into the fridge for at least a day but they're only gonna get better over time. Now after making these, I was curious why this works. Why do these tastes go so well together? And one of my books in my collection here is The Flavor Matrix by James Briskione. I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. I'll include a link to it down in the description below. So in this book for all manner of different foods and ingredients, there are all of these different flavor affinities. And the longer the bars are, the, the stronger the affinity. Two of these stronger bars you see on here are vinegar for sour, and we see honey up here for sort of a floral sweet, but there's also all kinds of fruits that add sweetness, including some citrus. Oh yeah, and pungent also, mustard. So it makes sense that these flavors work together. These have been in the fridge now for four or five days, marinating. That just hits so many of my happy flavors right there. And the moment you taste this, you're gonna be craving some cheese because that fattiness and creaminess of cheese does such a wonderful job contrasting against this. Now, while the olives are in the fridge, the sauce or the marinade is gonna be very thick. But as hopefully you can see here without me tipping to the point that I spill, the marinade thins out considerably, almost like a vinaigrette once it's had a little bit of time outside of the fridge. And for the purposes of my recipe out on my website along with the macros, which I'll link to down below, I calculated the entire amount of marinade that is in this. I realize that that is going to be an overestimate of the carb count because unless you're slurping off whatever residual marinade is on the plate, 
you're not going to consume all the carbs. And I'm also assuming that once you get all of the olives out of the jar, there's still going to be some marinade left in the bottom. Now, the first time you make this recipe, I encourage you to make it as it is in the recipe on my website. After you taste it, you may decide you want to tweak it. Perhaps a little less mustard or a little more vinegar. Maybe you want it a little more sweet or a little less sweet. Once you've dialed in the flavor the way you like it, if you want to make it in bulk, you can get one of these big jars of... This is the Tassos brand of pitted Kalamatas. I got this at Costco. If you drain the brine from this and keep all of the olives, the amount of marinade you would need to make is 2.5 times the recipe. So just take all of those values, multiply by two and a half, and you will have enough brine to fill up a full jar of olives. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And if it turns out this makes you a charcuterie hero, feel free to click that thanks button so I can buy some more balsamic. And thanks for watching.